Thanks for joining us here on The Human Resource. My name is Pandy. This is the second part on our topic of the Family Medical Leave Act. Now, last week we talked about just some of the, the, the framework, the, at the outside aspects of FMLA, what companies have to offer it, and uh, some of the details in regards to what it involves. But today I wanted to talk about a list of general facts, things that, that we tend to not really dive into, especially if we're, if we're just briefly going over FMLA. And I've got 15 here that I wanted to kind of go over because, again, I, I cannot encourage enough. This is a large topic. And the more you know, the better you can apply it within your company, but you can also make sure that individuals who are eligible are getting the protections they need. So fact number one, employees don't have to specifically ask for FMLA the first time they inquire for it. It's kind of like ADA. Remember, if you we've talked about it, the Americans with Disabilities Act. People don't have to use the word accommodation. The same is true with FMLA. They don't have to know. So what does that mean? That means that you need to make sure that your team leads, your supervisors, your managers, the individuals, again, that are doing most of the HR for your company on the boots on the ground, are they trained to hear a possible request for FMLA? Question for you. How about do the company policies around attendance and uh, call-in and performance, do you have those? Do they specifically give enough detail today so that if an individual goes out on FMLA, that we can hold them to those? You see, when somebody goes out on FMLA, they still have to abide by your company policies. And that's a misnomer. Most people think they're above it. They're not. They still have to call in correctly. They still have to understand that their performance has to be at the standards of your company. So if you don't have that in place, you might want to work on that. We talked last week that in an ideal world, employees are going to ask or share with us those situations that might qualify for FMLA in a 30-day notice. But remember what we talked about last week. That's not something that's etched in stone if it's an emergency situation. So keep everybody somewhat flexible. You don't want to deny something that might get you into trouble. We also like to remind everybody that, look, if you've got exempt workers that are going out on FMLA, it's an actual fact that you can have those individuals actually record their hours and pay them according to the guidelines of FLSA. Now, how does that work? Well, exempt workers usually don't clock in and out, right? But under FLSA, an unpaid benefit, we, number one, want to keep track of what days they're taking as an FMLA benefit against their 12 weeks of availability. But if they're not actually working and they're on a reduced workload, we can alter that pay and not pay that flat rate. And that's a great topic. We don't have time to really dive in today, but that's a great topic, again, to talk to your HR consultant or your labor law attorney, because remember, FMLA is overseen by wage and hour. You make a mistake there, and you've got the big boys coming down. But it is a fact. You can ask them to clock in so that we know exactly what time is actually productive and what time is actually FMLA protected. Fact number five. Did you know that employers are actually permitted to require a second opinion or supporting certification? Yeah, if, if you, and we'll talk a little bit more about who can provide those medical certifications, but if you're not comfortable with that, FMLA guidelines do allow you to challenge that. Now, it's going to be at your cost, so be prepared to pay for that doctor appointment. But have a good reason, and I would keep it a very business-oriented reason, for asking for a second opinion because you can exercise it if you want. 
Number six, employees are required to advise employers of why intermittent leave or reduced leave schedules are necessary. Now, again, 12 weeks within a year, but they don't have to take it as a block. But if they want to take it one here and one there and maybe another three next month, you have the right to ask them, I, I need to understand why. And, and quite frankly, if that intermittent reasoning is not in the paperwork, the, FB, uh, the FMLA paperwork, you have the right to ask for that. Number seven, employees on FMLA are not to be transferred into an alternative position if they're taking intermittent leave. So think about that one for a minute. If somebody has already told you that they need to take off once or twice a month for chemo or they need to take off uh, time for bonding their ch- with their child, you can't move them into another position that you think can accommodate that kind of a schedule. Remember, ADA even says you can't move people around and inconvenience others. But FMLA is even more firm in that you have to protect them and they get to stay in their same job. Number eight, FMLA does not provide for an undue hardship clause for employers. That's the one I get the most resistance on. So when you're talking with your leadership team or you're talking to the business owner and they say, well, we're going to have to deny it. We, we just can't afford for this person to be out for 12 weeks. You don't have that option. And if you want to insist on that one, again, I've got some great labor law attorneys that you can talk to about that. In fact, uh, one of the firms that I, I work with uh, as individuals specializing in nothing but FMLA, just for those kind of reasons. Number nine, employers are required to provide equivalent pay and benefits. Even if the job duties are altered and the employee does reduce their workload to accommodate the leave of FMLA, and that's by their request. We talked a little bit about this last week. If you've got discretionary or department-based bonuses, even if they're out for that portion of, uh, of the period, they're still eligible because they're a part of the department. If you're giving cross-the-board raises, they are eligible because they're a part of the department. Be very, very careful. I remember one company, they were going to uh, develop a team lead position, and they started interviewing employees for the team lead position. And the HR person went to them and said, hey, did you did you give her an opportunity because she's been out on, on FMLA? And they said, oh, no, no, she's not here. And when she gets back, she probably won't even feel like, you know, that's a position she wants. And they said, oh, no, 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 no. You have to give her the opportunity to say no. You have to give her the opportunity to interview just like everybody else. So watch the actions. Again, if you haven't trained your supervisors, your boots on the ground, and they're making these kind of decisions, pull them in, straighten them out. Number 10, a fitness for duty certification can be required if similarly situated employees are expected to provide one upon returning from a medical leave. Now, it's the employee's expense, but if you've got people coming off a worker's comp who are not on FMLA, if you've got individuals who, um, non-work-related injuries, but, and again, not on FMLA, but we're asking them for, hey, we want a, a report back from your doctor. You're in the, you, you may have restrictions. We want to be aware. Look, if they're in a similarly situated position, you have to do that with F- FMLA as well. And again, all this information stays out of their personnel file. This is information that stays in their FMLA file or a medical file. We have to treat people the same if they're in a similarly situated position and responsibility. Number 11, 
if the physician charges a fee to complete your FMLA paperwork with the medical certification, the employee is responsible for that. And down here in Cincinnati, we've got doctors that are charging as much as $30 to $35 to complete that paperwork. It does seem like a hardship for the employee, but it's their responsibility. You are not obligated as the employer to pay that. If an employee takes leave outside of the reason for FMLA, the employee can be disciplined according to company policies in a manner that is customary and practiced with other employees. You're number 12. So this is where your social media comes in. I have had supervisors who are adamant about checking to see if an individual is truly taking FMLA time for all the right reasons. And we have caught, I will have to say, we have caught some individuals at a theme park. We've seen them out fishing on social media. They're so quick to post. Yeah, I had a great day out. The weather's perfect. Enjoying the family when they're supposed to be on FMLA. And you know what? Maybe, maybe it is warranted. Maybe it's not. You have to be really, really careful. So go back to your policies. Do you have policies in place for, again, attendance and leave? And if you're recording the FMLA, make sure that they're not getting more than they're entitled to. And if you do think that you've got an issue where someone is abusing FMLA, that is a huge crime. That's, that, that's, you do want to address that. And that's another issue when you would want to go to your labor law attorney and lay out the facts. You can make copies of texts. You can take screenshots of, of what you're seeing on Facebook and such. And again, with the proper conversation, you can address that. Let's just hope it doesn't get to that, right? Number 13, supporting information is not required for FMLA leave to be approved. Now, what I mean by this is, if the employee is able to provide evidence that the information they're using to request FMLA is, is, you know, factual. Let's take pregnancy. If it's very obvious that this individual is having a baby, you may not need the FMLA paperwork. You might need it if she has to be bedridden early prior to the birth. You might need it if there are complications after the birth and she needs more time off than her original six weeks after the birth. So there is a time and there's a place. Use your discretion and do it fairly. But you don't always have to collect all the information we've been talking about. Uh, number 14, an employee can be on FMLA as well as ADA or maybe workers comp maybe short term disability all at, at at the same time so short term disability and workers comp aren't going to fall together those are going to be separate but you could certainly have workers comp FMLA and then ADA or you could have FMLA and short term disability at the exact same time well, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's multiple things that could be happening that you need to be aware of so that you can make sure the proper paperwork's done and so the proper people have been notified. The compensation isn't disrupted if it's available to them, especially during a time when they're on unpaid time of FMLA. And then number 15, Employees are to continue, or excuse me, employers, no, employees, excuse me, are to continue paying their contribution, their portion of all premiums for insurance and benefit plans while they're on FMLA. And again, as we mentioned earlier, the documentation recommended by the Division of Wage and Hour for FMLA, which you are not required to use, but they provided, has a section in there saying, look, if I'm paying 50% as the employer and you're paying 50% as the employee, 
you need to have your 50% in at this time and to this person. And if it doesn't come in and you're 30 days late or whatever time you just establish, we might be able to cancel that. And that's, in, that's really important information for an employee. They don't want their insurance canceled. But again, we just went over 15 facts that most employees don't know anything about with FMLA. I wonder how many of you from the employer's side knew a lot of that information. It's a lot. I get it. So stick with me next week because we're going to have another show on FMLA and I'm going to provide you with the questions that you're allowed to ask employees and not get in trouble, not go over the line. You've been listening to The Human Resource and we're thrilled you did. Take care.